think you was the only nigga that woo, -woo, -woo. but he, and he told me like about a week before I got shot, he knew the nigga that was shot me, and he was like, Pop, don't hang around this nigga, you know me, you know how we walked in with the nigga that shot me, and ended up shooting me. He's like, Pop, don't fuck with this nigga, because I knew the nigga too, he was my co mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, what you mean? He's like, I'll talk to you about it later, and we didn't talk. And the next time I saw him was at the studio where I got shot. So I knew he knew what happened. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Biggie, what happened? He kept sending me messages like a bitch, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna come see you. No, nigga, what happened? While I'm in jail, strangers is telling me, yo, you don't know? Biggie homeboy shot you. Cause they bragging, they telling they niggas in jail, yo, we just got pot, woo, woo, woo. And my cousin was in jail in New York, cause I got family out there. Mm -hmm. He sitting right there while the niggas get in the car going, yo, my homeboy's just jacked that nigga two pop. So that's how I knew, shot me, what happened and everything. They mad because I know what happened. That's why they all, you know it's big enough, they're not yeah. rotten. Mm -hmm. That's why what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. I'm destroying them. Mm -hmm. I fucked his wife, I'm fucking them in the game, I'm destroying them. He lives by the rules of the game. He lives off a of mafia image. I'm bringing him, showing how he, he totally disregarded the rules of the game, and he's everything but a mafia nigga. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm showing them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anybody's a mafia nigga, me, nigga. I fucked your bitch. I took five shots. I went in your crew. I mean, I just what? Mm -hmm. I went to New York. They don't do shows out here. I went. I did Saturday Night Live. Y'all forgot? Live in New York, where everybody knew I was gonna be there on stage, no problems. Went to the clubs, everything. In the middle with my West Side ride. You know what I mean? Because I'm real about it. I don't hate New York, but if y'all don't understand it, then fuck it, you get rolled over too. Because I hear y'all, I was in jail and I heard what they were saying on the radios. You know how we got the Wake Up Show? Like shit. Right, you know they got their own shows. They got their little mixed shows with Red Alert and this nigga and that nigga and, and um, what's his name, um, Flex. And I swear to God, dog, they used to diss the West Coast. They had these commercials where they'd be like, hey dog, what's up dog? And I used to be like, in jail in New York on my radio, like, oh shit. <laughs> You know how you would feel if you heard your homeboy oh. went home and just clowned you? And I was like, oh, man. Oh, and all my homeboys like, yo, puppy just did a show out here. I was like, how was it? It's like, good, we gave him love, we gave him this, we gave him that. He was talking all this unity shit. But then when they go home, they be popping. Q-Tip, they made all these underground tapes dissing us. Q-Tip? Yes, Q-Tip. So then when niggas ride back, then they want to talk about the culture and be hip hop and shit again. But that's not fair. Mm -hmm. How you gonna be bold? And that's what they all do. They all play badasses. Thank they for the food. They just diss me on, on the air on MTV. Fuji's diss you? They're not personally just the West Coast. They just introduced my finger as like California love. The East Side is the best side. Oh, I see them. All them niggas was talking about how much they respect me and love me. See, I hate that. Because I be they, they, dead serious. It's one thing when they say that. Now Chino XL is talking to... about me. He got a rhyme, or you know how he always got these little metaphors. He say, you'll get fucked like Tupac did in jail. Mm -hmm. Now I'm telling y'all beforehand, off the air, I'm gonna beat this nigga's ass. And I'm everybody's gonna be talking about me. how wrong I am, how I haven't changed, but what am I supposed to do when a nigga disrespected my manhood like that? See what I, I mean? It's like yeah, I can't yeah, get out the game. Just yeah, like I'm yeah. saying, just like Scarface and that Carlitos way. I want to be legit. I've got we got restaurants coming up with Alanis Morissette, me, Snoop, Sugar, and Alanis nice. Morissette open up a restaurant. Alanis is nice. I'm doing a soundtrack. Cool. My first soundtrack. I'm the music supervisor for this movie I'm doing. Woo! I got Alanis on there, Michelle, Inglacia, whatever her name. <laughs> all these, yeah, all these she alternative nice stars, no rap. All this shit coming up, but what's going to reign supreme in 96 and 97 is the ride I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And it's not even like, I feel like I'm doing it for hip hop. All I'm trying to do is get the imposters out. I remember Biggie sleeping on my couch. I remember begging bitches to fuck him. <laughs> oh! You feel me? Yeah. So, Big Papa don't mean nothing to me. He know it. He know it. That's why he can't fight me. That's why he can't battle me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can make know, songs you know talking exactly color. about you know him. He true. can't talk about me because he know. He know you, I'm you the know one that used color. to buy him champagne. All that shit he talking, that was me buying him that. He talking about my lifestyle with his album. Because when he was doing his album, he was broke, nigga. I was having money. I, the, the shit he talked about was my life. Thug life. That's what he talking about. All that junior mafia, them niggas was young motherfuckers that used to hang around that I used to give money to to get on a train to go home at night. Little season and all of them. And Kim and all of them. Yeah, so now they rapping against me. and You, you can imagine how I fucking feel. Mm -hmm. 
When, when I got arrested in New York, I got arrested for Biggie. Them guns in my room was Biggie's guns because them cowards left the room when they heard the police was downstairs and everybody left their guns in my room. So I got four guns in my room. Serial numbers scratched out and I did not snitch. I took that case. So you can imagine how I feel when I'm in jail for that case. And he out there living a mafia lifestyle, giving me no money, giving me no respect, giving me no tribute. Rolling with my road dog who was there when I got shot. I mean, come on, man. I'm not paranoid. Mm -hmm. I'm not paranoid. Nah, nah, Y'all niggas know what time it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what it is is that the East Coast drug dealers got them niggas as extortion. I came and fucked up everything. Because I dissed the niggas in the Daily News. They put a hit out on me. When the niggas tried to rob me, which is all they wanted to do, I knew what they told me. That's what they was telling me. Pop. They were sending me messages through my closest road dog saying, Pop, why did you fight them? They was just coming to take your shit. But I wasn't letting nobody take my shit, and I was strapped that day. That's what was, I couldn't put in the bar. I had two, two double glocks on me. And when I pulled for my shit, that's when I got shot. And the reason I knew my homeboys set me up is because my homeboys knew I was strapped. The dudes came straight for me. My homeboys is behind the niggas. Like, they running for Trey. My homeboys behind the niggas, and they didn't do nothing. They knew I was strapped. All they had to do was grab the nigga, and I could have bust. But they got guns, so these niggas are coming for me, and these niggas just sitting there. And they say, get, and these niggas drop to the floor. I knew it was a setup. Nobody come downstairs to after them shot. And then after you shot, now how did we, after you shot, you went up there, they looked at you like you was a ghost? Yo, when I walked upstairs, Sway, on everything I love, I seen it in their eyes. I could never describe this look until you get shot and you see it yourself. Mm -hmm. Niggas looked at me like this. I walked out the elevator, because I walked out the elevator, I didn't know I was shot in my head or nothing. I, I wasn't, they said in the vibe interview, I was acting like I was in the movie. Mm -hmm. What they really trying to say is this nigga is raw. Mm -hmm. I got shot five times, came upstairs, did not know I had got shot five times. I thought I only got shot once. Damn, dude, it sound like you got a lot on your chest. Oh my God. <laughs> It's been so long since the Bay's heard from you. And I mean, that's why I'm giving it to you. you straight raw, because you got to go back mm -hmm. and tell them the shit that we ain't recording. I'm giving you that, you know, not to tell them the specifics, but you but know when somebody calls you and goes, yeah. yo, why did you do this? You know, they go, trust me, we talk to them, we know, mm -hmm. blam, blam, blam. Now y'all know, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Just like they niggas on their radio stations know. Because mm -hmm. what I was mad at is that we didn't have a radio station like that. Me and Snoop got an okay from 92.3 to start West Side Radio. Mm -hmm. But I, didn't, I, I don't want to do it unless it's right. What I really just wanted, I was just proving the point again. I want our radio stations to be true to us, and we'll be true to y'all. Tell us. Nigga, you know, you know if you what? want that type of love, you better give us some commercials every week. We want new shit like they do on the East Coast. Uh, you know we want new happened. songs, especially you, for us. Did you get the copies of the West Side Radio? Yeah, I, I gave you. What'd you I think? I love it. That's what I was talking about. That's why yeah. now it's not such an important thing for us to do it personally because somebody is doing it. Yeah. But that's all I wanted was for somebody to have a we show like that. Because I'm from now. New York, and yeah. I know how they shows is. They dope. Everybody loves it. Hey, let's finish. Let's, let's finish. Take, yeah. right, I know you got to do your thing. Well, hold on, I want to ask you one more question about that, bro. All right. Yo, we, we back we back right here with Tupac, you know, just chopping up, chopping up a little bit. Uh, can't let you hear everything, you know. <laughs> Some I'll stuff. Put it down, yeah, yeah, yeah. My man is definitely putting it down. One more thing about Death Row. Now, how does the, um, what's going on with Dre and how does that affect Death Row as a whole? You know, hold on. Dre is doing his own thing. It don't affect us. My uh, take on what happened was that Snoop was on trial for murder, fighting for his life. To, somebody had said that Dre was in the car. The, the jury believed that. We needed Dre to be there to say he wasn't there. And once they would have saw him, they would have known he wasn't there. And that would have saved Snoop's whole case. Because they would have saw that the, the witness that had said it was lying. And Dre never showed up. He was too busy. That's how they told me. When they told me that, I was like, well, no matter how dope he is, and Dre's one of my heroes in the music business, but I was like, no matter how dope he is, if he's not down for his homeboy, Snoop, who brought him back when he was just a relic, when niggas was dissing him, you know what I mean? Then I don't want to be a part of him. I don't want to be around him or nothing. Plus, I feel as though what's done in the dark will come to light. It's secrets that everybody's going to find out about that I don't have to play a hate or dry snitch about. That will come out and you'll find out for yourself and you'll know why I did it. I swear to God, y'all, I'm living by the rules of the game that y'all, the people, have put down for us to live by.